Okay, so uh, let's start with our first question, Mary, for you. Um, sure. We want to talk first and foremost about, uh, actually, you know what, a great way to start is like, why don't you share with us some of the work that you're doing at Microsoft um, and how COVID has impacted uh, that work. Awesome, for sure, yeah. So uh, my role initially is uh, covering four areas and education is one of those areas in uh, Microsoft. So uh, before I become a, a community development specialist, I was the education expert. And uh, my role by that time was heavily involved with all the school districts here in Vancouver, North, North Vancouver, like I mean in BC mostly. Uh, and I was uh, promoting all the Microsoft education tools to educators. These tools are designed for educators. Uh, in Canada, they all have a, like a free access. They don't, need to, they don't need to purchase it. And my role was making sure all the educators are using these tools to the highest potential and loving the products. So uh, the reason I'm saying loving the products because I had so many wow moments uh, hearing it from educators once we went through like a very quick small demo to them, right? So uh, they love it because it makes uh, life much easier. They save a lot of time for educators and we all know that teachers need that time to focus on the other areas to design a better lesson plans. Uh, once I moved to the community development specialist role, uh, I still continue that role as it's not a necessary role for my new role, but this is something that I really by heart love doing that. Uh, we still engage with education industry and uh, like a teacher and a students collaboration uh, inside the classroom. So that's uh, why I continue doing the work and uh, I'm encouraging all my other peers in Canada as well to do that as well. Uh, this role, uh, specifically in the education area, uh, in a higher level, we uh, work with school districts. We promote the Microsoft education tools, not because it's a Microsoft education tools, because it teaches students uh, a lot of uh, soft skills. We want to empower students to achieve more. That's the Microsoft goals in education. And these tools are uh, the tools that help us to empower students. Uh, and learn a lot of soft skills that uh, they have been uh, ignored for so many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I was surprised to read that um, having focused so much on productivity, so the Microsoft suite of services and sort of the organization as a whole has found a way to almost like perfect productivity um, for lots of work environments and in some schools situations and scenarios, um, but to see that the priority has shifted into content and being able to produce or to create an environment that is going to enhance learning of less um, mechanical skills, uh, specifically around communication, collaboration, and creativity. That was really interesting to, to read about and to learn. So can you share with me sort of like and provide everybody with some context around that study that we're talking about today, the 2030 um, yeah, I think it's like class, a class of 2030. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So uh, that study came out actually last year. Uh, it was a partner uh, study between Microsoft and McKinsey organization. So uh, let's say in a simple word, within 10 to 12 years from now, uh, for the remaining jobs and careers uh, in the market, the technical skills are not enough to be truly successful. Uh, 30 to 40 percent of the jobs and careers they're going to be disappear within 12 years from now and we want to make sure that the kids that they are going to kindergarten and grade one this year and be graduated by 2030 from uh, high school are ready for work are ready to learn all those soft skills during that 12 years and this study is based on that it's based on what the students feels it's lacking and what educators feels is lacking uh, in order to learn all those soft skills uh, a very simple example uh, a salesperson with a lots of knowledge and product uh, knowledge about the market they won't be uh, like successful enough if they do not know uh, the interpersonal skills needed to return their clients, to uh, close the deal, to interact with their own clients. Like a business sales manager, so they need to be able to actually 
uh, have a conversation with them with their employees they need to be a very good listener they need to learn uh, the listening and speaking skills and have a very creative thought process in 12 years from now to be able to be successful and this is study is based on that that those soft skills at some point someone needs to teach them to the students i mean uh, that is music to my ears and in large part because I've always held this thesis that the one most important skill set that we need to have as a as as a group of students, but also sort of like as a human human civilization is adaptability, right? That's what makes us unique. Um, and as the times change, we'll go from an industrial revolution to the technological revolution, like the, the hard skills attached to what um, the economy demands will continue to change. But the one skill that will allow us to succeed in whatever environment that the economy has put on us is uh, adaptability. And that's such a core piece of uh, soft skills. Um, it's great to hear that Microsoft is putting sort of like research behind this perspective um, and adjusting their product solutions or their product offerings to reflect this. Um, I kind of want to know your own personal perspective. Like you work with teachers every day. You work with educators every day. You even volunteer your office, like you provide office hours. So like my appreciation for you, Mary, goes beyond <laughs> this webinar. So yeah, I know just how committed you are to educators. And I think it's important for us to highlight that one. But number two, get your perspective on uh, why you think soft skills are important for future generations and really like when it's the best time to learn. Uh, the best time to learn, let's answer that first. Uh, I've learned a lot in my early, like in my late 20s. Uh, there is no cap for learning. You can learn it every day, but uh, I can use an example. A few uh, months ago when the pandemic was not happening, I was uh, visiting my sister and we were cooking and there was a music in the background. Somehow I started like singing the lyrics word by word and my sister was looking at me and uh, like saying that this song is quite old. Maybe like, I haven't heard it for like, I would say 25 years, but I was saying all those words and lyrics like word by word without any mistake. And I realized that I learned these lyrics when I was eight, like the, the golden age of learning, when my brain is really hungry to learn, everything I learn stick to my brain, even though I haven't used it for 25 years. So, in conclusion, I can say like there is first of all no cap for learning. We can like learn every day, but those golden age, something between grade like two up to grade seven is the greatest time for brain because it's in the developing mode. It's in the area that everything that they learn stick to it and it's not gonna go away. <laughs> so that's the best time frame for learning. That's one like one piece, and then the other would be. Uh, yes, this adapted, like adapting to this new platform, to the virtual learning and uh, at the same time, the soft skill into that, uh, working with teachers, working with the students, uh, when you start working with them, you feel that there is a gap. You feel that the students are shy to share their ideas, uh, yeah. even though you call their name out, they don't want to speak to an uh, audience. And then when you feel that gap, you understand that, yes, there is a need that you need to teach soft skills. Like, it's very easy. Uh, uh, one of the like, tools in Microsoft Suites that uh, students have an access is recording audio and playing their uh, voices for students that they are socially shy and they don't want to like uh, present in front of the others. There's still ways to develop the soft skills for them by just using this technology. Okay, so I'm going to just visit the first point of your response um, because I'm going to push back and say that I'm, I don't know, I don't have the research behind this and so maybe somebody who is uh, participating in today's webinar can, can answer me, but um, if eight years old is the golden age, I'm going to say that the reason why it's the golden age is because in that time, we are the most, we are the most curious. We're the most empathetic. We ask 
all the questions, like how, how obnoxious is your eight year old nephew who's constantly saying, why dad? Why Auntie Annie? Why, 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 why? And then at some point throughout our education, like we stop asking those really critical questions and are told to just produce solutions and answers and responses. And so I would imagine that, you know, with your research and your experience sort of illustrating the importance of, or the opportunity that like eight grade brains or eight year old brains have um, is like further, further like underlines or underscores like the, the, the belief that we have that, you know, empathy is so critical to like learning anything, any hard skill, like weaved into and integrated into soft skill learning is, is, is really just going to be heightened. Um, so the reason, uh, the reason behind that, like uh, I would say, uh, at the age uh, eight, we start like, we start heavily be involved with the schools, right. and uh, for a very long time, schools and classroom layout were designed to be a teacher centered. There was a podium, teacher was like teaching us. And we were just taking note without asking a lot of questions and that asking usually one of the point of the stopping asking question is at age eight when they enter inside the teacher center classroom right okay so for those of you just joining us we are knee deep into our discussion about the importance of developing soft skills especially in a remote learning environment and really mary and i are sort of just like reiterating with one another <laughs> like how much um how much emphasis and importance we think it's, it should be put behind this type of learning um, and how, well, the, the last thing we were just talking about is like an eight-year-old brain and how it's more amenable to learning. And my argument has been that, uh, or it continues to be that like, these brains are just more comfortable with curiosity and so much more um, accepting of um, asking questions and aren't yet trained to just like produce responses and answers. Um, so this brings me to the next question, which I'm really excited to learn more about, Mary. Um, I know you and Microsoft are aligned in this and the, in sort of like the, the mission behind teaching empathy and curiosity, more specifically collaboration and communication in terms of soft skills, but um, what tools, aside from the voice recording, um, the voice recording option, uh, do teachers and students have to develop these skills in today's remote learning environment? Uh, so the entire Microsoft Education Suite, it's designed, uh, first of all, to be very accessible for everyone because we have a diverse learners, right? Uh, one of the tools, it's, uh, you may heard the name of Microsoft Teams, and a lot of businesses are using Microsoft Teams, but what is designed for education? It's Microsoft Teams for education. It looks like the same, but have lots of more features. And those features are designed to bring collaboration and communication and teamwork inside one hub. We use Microsoft Teams and uh, we always say Teams is a hub. Uh, the reason is for all the productivity between students and teachers work, they don't need to leave that hub. They can open that software, be inside the Microsoft Teams. They have their open uh, PowerPoint presentation inside the Teams, and a group of students can work together, all live, co-author at the same time. They can use Word document again inside the Teams and uh, work together. They don't need to leave, go to the different platform, find the different resources. They can be all in one place. And these tools are like necessarily designed for teacher students collaboration. There's a feature in Microsoft Teams, which is um, uh, the assignment piece that uh, in an ideal world, teacher can assign a, a digital assignments to one student or to a class that she's teaching or to multiple classes, have different rubrics assigned to this assignment, give the students resources, give them instructions, like anything that they need to do in order to return a really great looking assignment, they all are in one hop, like one of the tools, like, and then plus, Inside the Microsoft Teams, all the accessibility features is integrated as well. So if the students are not able to uh, look at the screen, there is immersive reader that reads the assignments to them. Uh, 
Uh, there's a bunch of different like features. They all are coming into one hub, which is Microsoft Teams. And uh, students can benefit that. They don't need to be using cross-platform and go to the computer, find something else, and take a picture or scan a picture. They can be all in one platform. That's why Microsoft is uh, promoting Microsoft Teams for Education, uh, which the entire Canada, all the educators, they have an access to. And uh, according to this pandemic, uh, was uh, accessible for anyone else outside of the Canada for free as well. That's so great to, to learn about, not just the, the, the importance that Microsoft as an organization is putting on developing um, soft skills, specifically around collaboration and communication. Um, they've really done a great job in terms of like integrating their existing, like um, their existing set of tools for educators. Um, and then also they have people like you who are just like so enthusiastic and so committed to the educators that you work with. So that's really, that's also like a, a key part of it, right? Is like you embody the soft skills that make it possible for educators to feel comfortable and safe in moving into um, a, mo a remote learning environment. Like I think, um, so for, for those of you who are also sort of just joining in now, um, Victoria is a student that we have. I'm going to unmute you, Victoria, because I know you were typing, um, who is a recent high school graduate, and she's going to, she's still kind of exploring her options uh, for university next year, and she's already done like a, a year-long online course. And so you, and maybe you can speak to some of the challenges that you're facing, because I know there's so many tools that are available to you today, including Microsoft. Um, how are you finding like this transition, Victoria? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think what makes it very, um, a very smooth transition is like very much like the platform uh, that we're using because um, like people often wonder like, how are you gonna get assignments? How are you gonna interact with your teachers and like your peers, right? Um, so I actually did like a two year long uh, program for the um, International Baccalaureate. Um, I was taking French online. Um, learning a language online is even, harder than like just learning um, any other thing because um, a lot of things are like very conversational and so where did I find this sort of interaction it was usually through meetings um, like like video meetings for like group orals and that sort of thing um, so I did end up like learning French I did end up like uh, doing well on my exams um, and so I think that this online experience is very successful for me, uh, but I do find a lot of my, of my friends, uh, people who took this exact same course, um, struggling a lot uh, with learning uh, in this new environment. So I think that there's still a lot to learn, uh, especially when uh, adapting these people to um, online courses. And they do require a lot of like diligence and um, effort, like a lot of commitment to the course. Um, so if you want to like um, take as much as you can from it. So I think there's a lot of um, new developments that need to be done uh, before like everyone is like very comfortable with online learning. Right, something that you and I spoke about independently was like maintaining engagement, right? It's so easy for mm -hmm. students like myself included to not have my video on. Uh, which makes a big difference in terms of these Zoom calls or the uh, Microsoft Team calls. Um, and also to not have your sound on or to just feel like you're watching a video, you know, like content mm -hmm. available all over the place, but like maintaining that, that engagement between the, the teachers, the students, and then um, like integrating the content into that. So I feel like that's a, a serious opportunity that um, education technology will have forever. <laughs> And so we can replicate that in-person experience. Um, so, okay, we're sort of nearing the end of our webinar and I wanted to open up the floor to um, any one of our guests who uh, are from all parts of the world. We have Australia, New York, Minnesota, Toronto, Vancouver, um, Shenzhen, I think also. <laughs> so does anybody have a question for myself, Mary, or even Victoria? Uh, you're welcome to put it into our group chat. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of throw it out there and then I can unmute you if you'd like to ask the question uh, as part of our webinar. You will be recorded. <laughs> um, so I'll just leave that as an open ask if anybody has a question. Um, yeah, just feel free to submit it in the chat. And then uh, Victoria will ping me. 
Um, but in the meantime, what I would love to do is play a game with everybody. We have about five minutes left with Mary, and uh, I'd like to share that the work that we're that we're doing at SoftServe is really to support educators and to support students in the development of soft skills, mainly creative problem solving, uh, critical thinking, um, and at the core of it, empathy and curiosity. Um, so the game is uh, based on a platform that we've developed and I'd like to share it with everybody, but I do have a question here. So let's start with this. Um, from Salvatore Gorcio, compared to Google, what advantage does Microsoft have in terms of their apps related to education? I'm sure you get this question a lot, Mary. Yes, so we get this question a lot. And uh, the main reason uh, that we uh, uh, offer Microsoft over Google is the privacy. Uh, privacy right now and data privacy, it's a big, big challenge right now around the world, around all cross platforms. And what we can uh, ensure our users and educators is you are dealing with sensitive data, you're dealing with education and information, which is quite sensitive. And the privacy of the Microsoft will keep all those data inside of your organization. For example, right now, Microsoft Education in Canada, all the users, end users, educators, admin, any sort of information and data, they all are kept inside Canada. They do not travel across the borders. And it's quite important because right now the VAR is over the data, right? So we do, you do not want to like lose or leak your information, especially it's sensitive information to outside of your organization. And Microsoft can strongly speak to the privacy. Absolutely. I'm going to sort of reiterate that because as an education technology company that's a startup, um, like in determining where we were going to store our data, it was critical to understand that in the UK um, and in Canada and the US, there are completely different data privacy laws. And so ensuring and having that confidence that the data remains where the product is being built and who the product is being built for was critical in our decision to, to choose Microsoft over so, um, but in any case, okay, we have a second question from Teresa, which I, I really love this question too. Um, in the real world, there are many, many apps, platforms, and software, okay? How does Microsoft intend to share right now among all of these options uh, since no school can afford to switch a com to a completely different system? Um, she's speaking in the educational field. So I, I, I guess I mentioned that earlier as well. Right now, according to this pandemic, Microsoft Education Licensing is offering for free. So if you're, if any organization and any institution uh, is submitted as an educational institution, they are eligible to get the Microsoft Education uh, uh, platform, Microsoft Education Suites for free. Uh, at this pandemic moment, they are not thinking of selling the products, they're thinking of empowering educators and students. Exactly, so the same thing with us, I think, um, in in seeing how the world is responding to remote learning and remote uh, work environments, uh, it's it's hypercritical that we are just supporting educators in what they do and making it this as easy and as a simple transition as possible. And so um, after this call, uh, Victoria is gonna provide everybody with, uh, Mary, is it okay if we share them your email? Yeah, for sure, go ahead. What we offer right now, I just wanna, sorry to interrupt you, is we offer free training as well. If this is a new platform for you and you're not comfortable using this, we offer free trainings from A to Z, level 100, level 200, to make sure at the end of the day, you're comfortable using the tools. And not also you, also we offer the training for students as well. If a student needs to get comfortable with this platform as well, they go through the students training with us as well. Okay. Cool, thank you so much. So Mary will be a resource for everybody. Uh, she will also direct you to the free resources um, that Microsoft is offering to all educators. Um, so on that note, I know Mary, you have to hop off and chat to have a bigger discussion with your Microsoft team. Um, if anybody would like to stay on, I'm gonna be sharing with you the work that we've been doing at SoftServe um, and providing you with also free access to our game-based learning platform to help maintain engagement with your students and to also be able to support them in learning the soft skills creativity, empathy, and curiosity. So um, for the time being, thank you so much, Mary. It was a wonderful to have you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, lots of people are thank saying- Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. And uh, like, I, I'm so sorry that I have to leave, but I have another call, but uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. I'm sure- Thank you. Well, 
uh, we'll be in touch. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I look forward to that. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. So bye for bye. The rest of us who are on the call, please uh, feel free to drop off if you have to go. But I would love to be able to share with you the work that we've been doing at South Serve this last year, working closely with um, people just like Mary and students like Victoria. Um, so yeah, we built a game-based learning platform for educators from K to 12 all the way to higher education to be able to uh, engage your students inside a classroom, uh, whether it's in person or remote, and more importantly, be able to support the development of the core skills, curiosity, and empathy. So I'm just going to share with you my screen. Uh, all right. So this is the platform and how it works for an educator after they've logged in is you have the opportunity to start a game or view performance data. So in starting a game, uh, you are prompted with the option to either create a custom game or choose one of our popular statements. Uh, so we'll start today with the future of learning is remote. As an educator who's hosting the game, you can choose a few forbidden words that will make it a bit more challenging for your students uh, to play. But in this case, we'll leave it open. We'll generate a user ID for the game or a game ID. Um, and this is something that you'll be able to share with your students. Once your students have logged in, ooh, let's see. We'll share with them here. You might have to do this, YouTube demo. What happens after we share this ID is your student will see a game prompt. Oh, there you go. A game prompt where they can join. Okay. And in this game, the student simply has to answer two questions. Who cares and why? And in answering these two questions, they are practicing uh, their empathy and their curiosity skills. And so when presented with the statement, the future of learning is remote, students have to get really critical and creative about who this might impact and why. So some really popular answers uh, are about educators, about students, are about the administration and the government. Uh, the response that I decided to write about is a little bit more creative, I'd say, than normal, uh, than the average, as I wrote about Zoom stock holders. And for students where the statement, the game statement that day um, doesn't necessarily resonate, it really, really challenges them to think creatively and critically. Okay. As you see here, uh, there were specific words that the student couldn't use. Um, They'll then submit their responses, and then there's voting across the class. So you'll see near the end here that there were a number of responses, some more empathetic than others, some more creative than others. Uh, but a few of the students included responses that involved um, their own concerns that studying in isolation could be a negative outcome, um, create a negative learning environment, uh, lower income communities uh, that are scared that their students may be at further disadvantage, and so, depending on how students perform or how responses are voted on, uh, the educator will then have the opportunity to review the student performance data here and start to understand like, how students are progressing in their development of uh, these soft skills, empathy and curiosity. So, yeah, this is something that we've been working on for um, over a year and a half. And we're so excited to share that it is now available to all educators for free. And uh, if you're interested in uh, a one-on-one -on -one demo and having and, and receiving free access, uh, we would love to share that with you. Victoria is going to follow up this call with those resources too. Um, but that's pretty much for us today. Uh, this is available for use now. Uh, if you are interested, Salvatore, we will definitely be sending you access. And uh, yeah, we're just really in a, in a stage where <laughs> this is cool to have it like happen in real time. So he's saying yes, please. Um, <laughs> if there is a possibility, um, like we would love to have as many educators on board as possible to provide us with the feedback so that we can make this uh, a better tool for teaching and tracking soft skills as we uh, move into the 
to the new school year. So, um, all right, well, thank you so much for your time. I hope that this was as enjoyable for you as it was for myself, Victoria, you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great um, being part of this, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have you in part of more conversations because I think you create like you create such a fun dynamic and uh, uh. <laughs> are, are like I forget a lot of the times that like we don't involve students in these things but like you are the reason why we exist so <laughs> it's great to hear oh this is your first webinar welcome we're happy to have you and you're only <laughs> oh, we need to screen grab this can you see that just like uh, <laughs> Is it Kaitla? I'm gonna make you make it possible for you to both be unmuted. So, Salvatore and Kaitla, you are both unmuted. So, if you'd like to say hi to us, we can have like a more of a human conversation. Uh, hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you so much. And I, when I saw that game, I immediately thought that I wanted to use it today. <laughs> I was already thinking of the, you know, what sort of statements to, to ask my students. And, uh -huh. and so I look forward to using it. Thank you, Salvatore. Can you share with me where you're teaching today? Yeah, I teach at Bronx Science in, uh, in, uh, in the Bronx, New York City. Very cool. And uh, I'm in the world languages department, so I can make the game into another language, obviously, so I can have the prompt in, in another language i it might be hard to block the words uh, as you did because then that's going to really limit their their ability to write back and since it's not yeah you know what you would be surprised. Give, them, give them green light for the whole thing yeah you would be surprised at just how good students get at it like the second, yeah the third attempt yeah the first time is sort of like a um, for lack of better words, a gong show. People, <laughs> the students are like, well, what is going on here? Um, how can I be empathetic so quickly? How can I be creative? And when they start to see their teammates' responses, when they start to understand how other students in the classroom are marking the, the answers, um, it becomes very clear to them, like just exactly what they need to do. And so they're just so, yeah, they're just so um, adaptive in that way. Um, but also, I love that you thought about the types of problem statements or the types of statements that you'll include, because um, we find that we have educators who are using this in computer sciences, uh, who are using this in philosophy, who are using this in forms of government. So the application is widespread, and it's entirely up to the educator to, to sort of like um, be explorative and creative about how to do this. So like in using the tool itself, like you're also sort of flexing your uh, soft skills. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to ask you, um, do you target specific soft skills? And, and if so, uh, what are the ones that we should um, maybe target with our students? Because I know a lot of the times we work on, let's say critical thinking, okay? That's something that really comes back with our students. But also when I think of soft skills, I, I tend to think of maybe as, a, as an adult, maybe something like time management or like, you know, cultural awareness and all these kinds of skills that um, sometimes we, we look past, we, we sort of um, take for granted. And so do you have any advice on how to target specific skills and, and what we can do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've been so lucky to have worked in close partnership with over 2,000 educators this last year and a half, two years. Um, funny story, oh, not funny story, but like coincidentally, we were um, incubated out of the NYU Start Ed program. And so I have, my favorite fried chicken is in the Bronx. So <laughs> <laughs> I forget where it's called, um, but what it's called. But um, in any case, I, yeah, so our work has allowed us to, to connect with uh, educators from, oh my God, all parts of the country, all parts of the world, but uh, where our pedagogy really stems from is Stanford C School's design thinking. And uh, their perspective has always been, uh, they have a, the a theory for creative problem solving that deconstructs the creative problem solving process into individual parts. Um, that first part is empathy. 
So being able to understand like who's experiencing the problem and that's in large part why we ask the question, who cares? You know, when the statement, um, yeah, so it's Stanford. Yeah, no, no, sorry. I wrote that because I couldn't catch the rest of the name and I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, so Stanford D School, D dot S C, yeah, school. <laughs> um, like that? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And, uh, and then following- And so you're that, saying about empathy. Exactly. So at the core of the creative problem solving model, at the innovation model, um, is empathy. Because if you think about like any other soft skill that you are practicing or developing, um, the one thing that is a requirement before any of that is possible is really understanding another person's perspective, like who might be experiencing this as a challenge or as an opportunity. Um, and so we've deconstructed our process too, that's to start with empathy. Um, the second is curiosity, so who cares and why. Um, we focus- So I'm just gonna write these down as you say, <laughs> and you said the other one, curiosity. Curiosity, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. um, our approach has always been that through games and through exercises, we can really incentivize and encourage students to practice these skills in the same way that they would practice hard skills. Like when we teach somebody how to play basketball, it's important that they understand how to dribble a ball, how to hold a ball, where to throw the ball. Um, and it's only through these mechanics being perfected day in and day out are they truly becoming a, a great basketball player if that's what they intend to do. Um, and we believe that developing soft skills can exist in the exact same way, is if we deconstruct them into their individual parts, empathy, curiosity, ideation, which is communication, um, collaboration, creativity, uh, critical thinking, like what are those actually involved? And we truly believe it starts with empathy and curiosity. I mean, there's a lot of talk of, um, you know, mindfulness in our schools right now. Um, and, and it's a big deal. And, and I th think a lot, I think we know it in theory, but sometimes it's hard to, to sort of put it into practice because what we, um, we have certain, you know, biases um, that um, sometimes make it hard when we construct assessments. Mm -hmm. And it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that that's been your experience because when we think about soft skills, the way that they're defined uh, are there are these like intangible, immeasurable um, characteristics or like abilities, right? And so in trying to understand them and in trying to measure them and define them, like um, that's like a, it feels almost like an existential crisis. Like how can you do that to this thing? I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do it through projects. Um, um, for Mother's Day, so I signed this on, I think I signed it on Friday, May 8th, and I asked uh, uh, my students to uh, dedicate a poem to, to the mother, you know, to all mothers, and write us a short essay, and then I asked them uh, to, to tell us what does it mean to be a mother, and the final thing was to show an object that they would de dedicate to, to mothers, and I hope that did um, allow me to see some empathy on their part. Um, obviously, it, it targets communication. Um, maybe a little bit of curiosity with, by, with choosing the, you know, the object that they had to dedicate to their moms. But sometimes it's hard. It's hard if I wanted to target these skills. Um, it, it, it becomes hard to to target those and at the same time meet um, the demands of the curriculum and you know teaching grammar and all those things so that's I think that's the struggle that I think that's the struggle teachers have but don't like to talk about it okay. a lot of teachers don't want to show that you know they're struggling with something Salvatore I would be so honored to have this exact conversation with you in a webinar. <laughs> so like one of the things that we love doing the most is learning. Um, 
like this is just a part of our team mandate is like to constantly be learning. And I think that the, the challenges that you present and like the perspective that you have from an educator in New York City or in the Bronx is um, like could be so valuable and could allow so many more um, meaningful discussion points to be explored. You know, um, in the past we've had higher education um, like professors from uh, and faculty members from higher education institutions like Harvard and uh, NYU and I think it'd be really great to like start to introduce some educators from K-12. What do you think Victoria? Yeah I think that's a great idea. <laughs> um, like very yeah. fascinating conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah I think it'd be great to hear more um, from you Salvatore. Yeah thank you. There's a lot to you know there's a lot to talk about and it's I think sometimes we, we don't have the time to really get, you know, deep into the conversation. And, and it's just, mm -hmm. we, we tend to explore the surface. And, and by the time we, we start to really get into the meat of, of you know, of things, um, either we, we run out of time or something like that. Today was a following. Yeah. I was actually, uh, this morning there was the, um, the Microsoft uh, Education Day or something like that. Somebody sent me a link and I was following that. Um, but it almost seems, and you know, a lot of people think I, I take too long or something like that, but it almost seems like we always run out of time. And it, <laughs> before we, 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 we've covered all the bases and, and stuff. And so anyways, but um, I like that, you know, I saw that immediately just hit me, that game that you showed before. And it just, you know, how the, the light bulb go, goes on <laughs> and you're like, oh man, this is great. This is going to, tomorrow morning, that's what I'm going to be assigning. I'm so excited <laughs> that I, okay, we're going to be putting you on our, um, on our pilot for sure. And uh, so I will personally, like, um, Victoria and I will personally follow up with you with access to that. Yeah, great. First, I would actually like to spend more time chatting with you, um, maybe like doing a one-on-one -on -one demo so that you're really successful sure. on the platform. So we'll schedule that too. Um, yeah. Kayla, there's someone on the line, there's someone else on the line that we totally forgot about. Kayla, um, congratulations on making it through your first webinar at 61 years old. We're so happy for you. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I teach math. I teach adults. And am I, are you hearing me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. so you. I teach yeah. adults. And uh, I'm on an island too, Salvatore. I'm on, I'm on the west coast of uh, British Columbia here on Vancouver Island. So my son teaches um, on another island, Flores Island, in a community. He teaches, we're, we're First Nations people. He teaches language and culture, and I think that game is going to be absolutely priceless for him as a means to communicate and engage his students that he works with at the high school level. That's just it. And you know what, Kayla? I'm going to encourage you to even try it with your students, that your adult students who are learning math, because there's nothing more powerful than understanding why it's important to know math or to learn math, learn these hard skills. And so some of our, our most fun and creative expressions or creative uh, applications of soft serve today are with computational thinking. Um, I actually have it here. Uh, I think in one of our blogs, we wrote about how to integrate computational thinking into soft serve. Um, so you can start to present things like, uh, you know, concepts like currency, differences in currency, or concepts of, um, Oh my gosh, my brain is sort of like collapsing at this moment, but <laughs> all the question of math suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I can share with you a resource that like we actually have a, I just don't want to bring up my email because it's going to make noises, but um, Shane, who is a mathematician and a part of Mensa, who's on our advisory board, who's built out this entire um, like 20 or 30 different problem statements or game statements for soft serve designed exclusively for math. And what it does oh. makes it possible for the students to like appreciate math, not just the being able to do math, but to really love and enjoy like the reasons why math exists. So um, this, is, this is our whole mandate is to be able to bridge 
soft and hard skill learning. So if you're learning a new language or if you're learning um, about forms of government or about computational thinking, like you can also learn about empathy through that content. And you can also learn about curiosity through that content, think critically and creatively um, through that content. So I'm thrilled that there's cool. a diverse group of people who participated and who have stuck around for today. Um, I will personally reach out to the both of you to do a demo and I cannot wait to get your feedback on how this has made a difference in your classrooms. Thank you. That would be great. Of course. Of course. Thanks so much, Kayla. I'm so happy <laughs> your first webinar. <laughs> yeah. It won't be your last. No, I no. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be. This is just the beginning. Yeah. In what other environment do you get to have a conversation with um, you know, startup tech founders, executives at Microsoft, <laughs> an educator in world languages uh, from the Bronx, and then um, a, a, like a community member of the First Nations. Um, yes. So why the world works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Yep. The power of remote learning. But uh, okay. Yes. So, so I will let the both of you go. I'm going to wrap up this video. And um, both Kayla and Salvatore, after our demo, I'm really going to make an effort to have you be on a webinar. <laughs> super, super. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just have a quick question. Uh, so, Kayla, what's uh, is is that your full name? Your your first name? I mean, that's my computer's name, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's Will um, Will Magus. Will Magus. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> yeah. Pardon? Oh, we're just going to make sure we have your email addresses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I have it here. Uh, Wilma.gus at nick.bc.ca. Yes. Yeah, that's me. Okay, awesome. Right. Um, and Salvatore, I have, I have yours too. Great. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You have it at Bronx Science EDU, right? Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Gorsio at uh, Bronx Science EDU. Yeah, yeah great. You know that's what, Salvatore? Yeah. I, I, for my PD activity, as a First Nations person here on the west coast of British Columbia, for the last four years, I've been going to New York City to see, because there are more of our artifacts and, and objects in New York City than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 So I'm missing that this year. Oh, no. You couldn't go this year, you said? No, because our border is closed yeah. <laughs> for now. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, hopefully soon, come on. Yes. By the summer, we should be open again. Yes. So look forward to seeing each other in person next year. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK. Thank you, guys. OK. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank oh. you. Bye-bye. Yeah.